It's 10 o'clock, so we'll start. My name is Joe Hansen. I'm a Master Gardener volunteer with Extension in Sarasota. Uh, I'm in our big classroom by myself. Over in the corner is Kevin O'Hora, and he's our technical guru, and he's going to be monitoring the chat. And Wilma Holly is our program specialist. She's out there in the ether somewhere for moral support. So uh, I understand they've been doing a lot of these classes on Zoom. This is my first, so bear with me. I think we'll get through it fine. Kevin says we've had people from all over the world sign up for these things and attend. So Kevin's looking at the chat. So if you'll tell him where you're from, we'll see who's the farthest away today. Uh, everybody's familiar with extension. It's, the, it's a partnership or cooperation between the university, all of the land grant universities in the 50 states have extensions, and the counties, so that's the cooperation, and it's to get research-based information out from the university to the public. And then all of our extension agents are actually university faculty, and then they take they train master gardener volunteers like me to further expand that. So we have about 100 master gardener volunteers here in Sarasota. A lot of people don't realize how much there is an extension. We have ag, natural resources, school gardens, Florida friendly landscaping is the umbrella under which we teach everything. We have both commercial and residential horticulture, chemicals, there's a whole list of stuff. 4-H, is also part of extension. So I mentioned Florida Friendly Landscaping. That's a program that actually started here in the Sarasota Manatee area about 25 years ago. They were uh, sampling the bays and the estuaries and trying to figure out why they were having so many problems with the seagrasses and figured out that most of the stuff problem was the stuff that runs off our yards and streets. So they started a program called Florida Yards and Neighborhoods, which has over the years expanded into Florida Friendly Landscaping. It's run out of the university in Gainesville. We get funding from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. But the whole Florida Friendly Landscaping program is based on nine principles that we'll go through here briefly. First one is right plant, right place. Just because something's native doesn't mean it'll grow anywhere in Florida. There are plants that like wet feet, dry feet, sun, shade. So you need to find what conditions they like. And mature size is important because if you want a shrub in front of your house that's only four or five feet tall, don't plant a podocarpus that wants to be 40 feet tall. So it's important to get the right plant in the right place and then you won't have as many problems. Uh, right plant, right place. Water efficiently. Florida Friendly Landscaping is all about protecting Florida's water resources. So watering efficiently, putting the right water in the right place is important. A third principle is fertilize appropriately. We don't want to let fertilizer running off our yards and into the bays. Mulch is important, it helps moderate the temperature of the soil, keeps the weeds down. It doesn't stop them, but it helps minimize them. Uh, attract wildlife. The more we develop in Florida, especially the more wildlife habitat we're destroying, so we need to do things to help attract wildlife into our yards. Manage yard pests responsibly. Find out what you think the pest is and make sure it's really a pest. Take it to your extension agent, wherever you are. Find out what it is, what's the best way to get rid of it. We have people that come into our plant clinics with a bug and say, what is this? What do I spray to kill it? And it's a ladybug larvae. So uh, find out what it is, manage it responsibly. Don't just go get some broad spectrum pesticide that's gonna kill everything around because there are a lot of beneficial bugs out there. Less than 1% of all the bugs are actually harmful to your plants. So. The next one is recycle yard waste. In Florida, it's illegal to put yard waste into a municipal line landfill. So we recycle stuff 
chip it up, use it for mulch. You can get a little chipper shredder or cut it up with your weed whacker and use it for yard waste for mulch in your yard rather than burying it somewhere. Uh, the ninth, eighth principle is reduce stormwater runoff, and that's green because that's kind of where we think rain barrels fall, and we'll talk a lot about runoff. And the last principle is protect the waterfront. Sorry. Uh, so I mentioned runoff. Everybody knows what runoff is. It's water that flows off our yards, roads, parking lots, everything, and it ends up in the bay. Um, very few municipalities or places treat stormwater runoff. When I was in grad school, uh, I had a professor who had done a study. They went out after it had been, had not rained for a few days or a couple of weeks, they went out and collected the first flush of water when it rained. And it was amazing how many heavy metals and grease and stuff they picked up off the roads just from our cars that we dropped and the roads mess. So it all ends up in the bay somewhere and carry pollutants into our water supply, whether, whether we drink surface water or groundwater. Does everybody know where their drinking water comes from if you have municipal? If it's surface or groundwater, you ought to know because we're all drinking it. Okay, we'll talk about water. 97% uh, of all the water on earth is salt water and almost 70% of the fresh water is or was frozen in the glaciers. So when you do all the math, less than 1% of all the water is available for us to drink. Everybody know the difference between potable and non-potable? Potable or potable means that it's drinkable. There's not a lot of potable water left out there. And no matter where you are on earth, somewhere underneath you, there's groundwater. So we need to protect that too. And that water, all that water is the same water that's been here for millions of years. We're not making any new water. You remember the fourth or fifth grade, the hydrologic cycle, it rains, it evaporates, it runs off, evaporates, rains, that cycle. Uh, I heard a guy on the radio once saying, every time you drink a can of beer or a glass of water, you're drinking dinosaur pee, because all that water's been here forever. And even BC knew that. Is that enough time? Everybody get that? All right. We're all water creatures. Water makes up 60% of your body, 70% of your brain, and 80% of your blood. And even though we can live almost a month without food, you won't survive more than a week without water. So we need to protect the water we have. Okay, no more preaching. So what's a rain barrel? Uh, it's almost any container that you can use to collect rainwater, mainly for the purpose of irrigating your landscape. There's a lot of different vessels out there. This one is a 55 gallon drum, like what the county sells here. This one over in the middle is what we call a carboy. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. A carboy, which is C-A-R-B-O-Y. It's, it's like a 200 gallon rectangular tank. It comes with that aluminum cage on a skid so you can pick it up with a forklift, but it's got holes and you can plumb it up and use it for a rain barrel. The one on the far right is one that I had at my house before we moved into an apartment. It's a 200 gallon aerator tank from one of the water treatment companies. I'm sorry, I, I'm not. Okay. Again, I got it from one of the water treatment companies and I plumbed it up. Uh, our house only had one, 
I don't even know. Only had a gutter across the pool cage and it all ran one direction and a half inch of rain on the roof, the back half of the roof of our house would overflow that 200 gallon tank. I need some beep. <laughs> the one on the lower left is another 200 or so gallon tank that somebody in the county found. They put a lot of these around at the county libraries here in Sarasota. And then the last one, the little red one, is one of the old, they're food grade plastic. We did a batch of them once that had peppers in them and we all cried the whole time we were uh, doing them because they still had the dregs of the pepper juice in the bottom of them. They're harder to find now because food grade plastic is so expensive, they're recycling it. The ones we had actually came from Greece and they send them back to Greece to recycle them. So there's lots of places you can get barrels. Trash cans won't work. I've seen people use, try to use heavy duty trash cans, but they're not designed to hold liquids. And sooner or later they split down the side and then they're useless. So you need to find something that was made for liquids, but you also want to make sure your barrel didn't have some petroleum product or some nasty solvent in it. You want food grade barrels. Uh, you can find them in a lot of places. There's a barrel reclamation site up here in Lakeland, Florida, that's not too bad. But uh, if you're really nice and you hit them at the right time, your local car wash may give you or sell you for a couple of bucks their empty soap and wax barrels. And I can tell you from experience, they are slimy, but it's just soap or wax. So wash it out, rinse it out. It's not going to hurt <laughs> your plants. I had one that somebody gave me that. Uh, Smell is such a primal sense. We cut the top out of it and it was the soap that they used to wash the floors with when you were in the fourth grade. If you remember when somebody threw up and they came and mopped the floors, that was the smell of the soap that our barrel had. <laughs> so there's a lot of them out there. Just again, you don't want something toxic in it. Most of the barrels that Sarasota County sells are recycled juice barrels. Every now and then you'll take the bung out of one and you get a whiff of old orange juice or apple juice. Okay. Basically, you're getting, we're trying to get less pollution into the waterways. You save money. You can back up storage during a drought. Re again, to reduce that stormwater runoff. Even if you just slow it down and let it soak in, that's better than just letting it run off in the first in the rain. And if you're set up right and you direct your overflow in the right direction, you can reduce erosion in your yard. I was at a conference one day when somebody said we need to start thinking about rainwater as a resource, not a waste product. All right. Only non-potable uses, water your plants, fill your bird bath, wash your car, clean your garden tools. I had a couple of earth boxes set up next to my rain barrels, so I had a whole little shore hose. I could fill the earth boxes every day. Uh, we had one master gardener that used the water out of her rain barrel for her pressure washer, but she had a much better pressure washer than we did because ours didn't have enough oomph to do anything with that. It didn't have enough pressure behind it. Just don't put any fertilizer or chemicals in your barrel. Uh, most places in Florida now have fertilizer ordinances that say you have to use slow release fertilizer, which is not soluble. So if you put non-soluble fertilizer in your rain barrel, it's going to sit in the bottom of the rain barrel. Or if you use the stuff that's dissolved, you're breaking the law. So don't put anything in your barrels chemical-wise. All right, if you make a rain barrel, you're going to need a drill, uh, a 15 16th drill bit you may or may not use, depending on how you want to set it up. The 15 16th drill bit will fit a 3 quarter inch national pipe thread hose bib if you want to put your hose bib on the side. A 2 and a quarter inch hole saw will cut a hole that will fit a 2 inch PVC fitting. You can see this, it's orange threads on one end because somebody spilled glue on it. 
but one end is meant to thread into a hole and then the other end is meant for just to be glued but don't glue it uh, we'll talk about what to do with these you may need a saber saw to cut a hole in the top for your downspout obviously you're going to need a drum you need the hose bib teflon tape yes Joe, we have a question kevin says we have a question somebody wanted to know if you have the chemicals does that include anti-mosquito tablets we're going to talk about mosquitoes yeah you can put mosquito bits or something in there but i got a whole slide on mosquitoes so we'll get there uh, Teflon tape, we used to say PVC glue. My husband and I found out the hard way, don't glue your piping together. PVC pipe, if you're putting it together without glue, if it's pretty tight, you're not gonna have too many leaks. And uh, we had put our barrels, we had all this fancy piping and had it all run down together. And then we had to take them down and clean them out and find out found out we had to cut all that pipe apart because it was glued. So don't glue it. You don't have a lot of pressure. When you turn on your water at home, if you have water from a municipal supply, you want to get 65 or 70 or maybe even higher, depending on where you are. PSI, pounds per square inch. A rain barrel doesn't have that. You've got one pound per square inch is equivalent to two feet of water head. So if you've got a barrel that's sitting four or five feet high, you've only got a couple of PSI. So don't glue your pipe together. It's, if you get a drip, it's just gonna be a drip. And then you may want caulk if you wanna caulk around your downspout, depending on how you connect your downspout. The barrels sold by the county come with all this equipment. Uh, they have the, I will show you later what they give you. They give you a valve, a fitting, they have you set the barrel upside down, but we'll go through that later. But you're probably gonna have to have the drill and you're gonna have to fix your own overflow, but they have a good bit of what you need. All right. There is a rain barrel book, and I think we're gonna put that up online or there's a link to it somewhere. Kevin just gave somebody my last one here, so I can't show it to you. <laughs> it's critical that your barrel be level and stable. A 55 gallon drum full of water is gonna be a 400 plus pounds and you don't want it falling over. I like concrete blocks. They're easy, they're easy to find, they're fairly inexpensive, and I set them up. I usually put like a stepping stone under the bottom and then the two blocks and then a stepping stone on top. The stepping stones kind of help keep the blocks level together and keep the critters out of the holes in the blocks. The bottom picture there is a, is a wooden stand that somebody built and we had some plans for that, but Unless you're putting it on a concrete slab, it's really hard to get those four legs level and stable. So, I, like I said, I like the concrete blocks. You can find decorative blocks if you want them to look fancy, but don't spend a lot of money on a big wooden stand. Okay, so where do you put your barrel? What's wrong with this picture as it is? The uh, downspout discharges right next to the house, which you don't want. You need to get the water away from the house. It's probably eroding all the rocks out of there. So I don't have anybody to answer my questions. So you probably, that's a good spot. You could put it there. Why did they set the barrel that far away from the corner? I don't know. Maybe they didn't want it to show from the street. I don't know why they did that, but that was a good place to put it. Uh, and then you cut your downspout. And sorry, I can't find it from here. Cut your downspout and fit it in. This is one of my barrels. It's one of those red ones like that. 
if you're not familiar with them, the, the top on those is like the lid on an old canning jar. That ring screws off and there's a plate inside. You can either take the plate out. We took the plate out of some and put a screen across the top and put the ring back on. Or you can just put your downspout directly into it. The bottom center is another one of my rain barrels. And the black thing that you see is a basket like this. It's actually meant for putting a plant in a pond. Uh, we'll talk about my friend Linda. She and I did a lot of, she had 17 barrels, I think, at last count. She, uh, this is a basket in any of the big box stores in the garden center, usually back in the back corner somewhere where the pond material is. They have these baskets. We cut the hole so that it sits under the rim. I can't see it. So it doesn't fall in, so you want it in the rim. And then it's wrapped in screen, just scraps from pool cage or window screen. Um, I'm pretty OCD, so mine's sewn in on all the corners and folded neatly, but you don't have to do that. But this is pretty nice. If you get a lot of debris and leaves and stuff in your barrel, you can, th that will catch it, and then you can take it out and dump it so it's not in your barrel. The one on the right here is a new one we just put in. It's a rain chain. So you don't have to have a downspout. This is right outside our building here. It goes, the chain drops down into the building and then you see the overflow go out the side of that barrel. But they're pretty neat. They look nice when they're not in use and when it rains, they actually work. So. If you're in a house somewhere that has the air conditioner on the second floor or up elevated, you can collect the condensate off your air conditioner line. And depending on the humidity, you can get anywhere from two to four gallons a day per ton of air conditioning. So there's a lot of water there. The problem most of us have is that line from the air conditioner comes out about a foot off the ground and it can't get it into your barrel. You really ought to get it away from the house somehow, but it's hard to get that into the barrel. Okay. You can find these flex connectors in most of the big box stores. I've seen green ones and white ones and brown ones. They are flexible and it makes it a lot easier. Cover, it makes a, covers a lot of sense if you don't cut your downspout exactly right. They're nice to have. Okay. Are you okay? All right. I've mentioned overflow devices a couple of times. You need to get the excess water away from the barrel. You don't want it running over the top and then eroding whatever your block, whatever your barrel's sitting on, the barrel fall over. So it's just a pipe out of the side somewhere to direct the water away from the barrel. The one on the left here, when you have a straight-sided barrel like these, you can just put a fitting in the side. Again, it's one of these guys. Uh, I used to work in the chemical industry and the pipe fitters called these a screwed to glued fitting because it's meant, it's threaded on one end and it's meant to be glued, but don't glue it on the other end. So you drill your two and a quarter inch hole, screw this in, get an elbow, and then you can put pipe and run it wherever you want. So PVC pipe's pretty easy to work with, especially when you're not gluing it. Uh, when you drill a hole and you want to screw or thread something into it, it's a little hard to get it started, but you can get it and it will cut its own threads into the plastic. The barrel on the right with the curved sides, it's kind of hard to drill a round hole in a, in a surface that's curved both ways. So usually on those, we put the hole through the straight section of the barrel and then on the inside is what we call a stand pipe. This little, I can't, this little piece of pipe that sticks up inside the barrel. So when the water comes in, it'll fill up and it will fill till it gets to the top of that stand pipe. And then it will go out through your fitting in the wall and then out, you can run it wherever you want. But 
your overflow needs to be at least two inches. In Florida, a couple of my big tank, I wished I'd had a four inch overflow. I just never did figure out how to do it. And if you're drilling a hole in the side of a barrel, be sure you hold your drill perpendicular to the barrel. If you get it off at an angle, you're gonna end up with an elliptical hole and then your fitting won't screw into it. So have to be careful drilling. Here's some more overflow. Uh, the one on the left, they use, they use four inch corrugated pipe. I'm sure there's a stand pipe on the inside of that for the overflow to come out and then it runs out this big pipe and it just lays out in the yard and that's where it was last week. And there's where it was the week before. So every time the guy cuts the grass, he has to go pick up his pipe. Uh, on this, that's on my big tank again. We buried a piece of that four inch corrugated pipe and put an elbow and then the overflow drains into that and that pipe run, ran about 20 feet out into the swale between our house and the neighbor's house and bubbled up out there. So that got the water away. The one on the right, somebody got pretty creative with downspout material and just cut it in the side and ran it down into a splash block. As we go through this, you will see there are a million ways to set these barrels up. Everybody thinks differently. Everybody's got different situations, different experiences. So you just have to be creative and get it where you want water to go. Uh, you can connect multiple barrels if you want more than one. Uh, Wilma took this picture up in Pinellas County. I like it because I can say this, I am one. Some engineer had way too much time on his hands and decided that he wanted a sight gauge along the side of his barrel so he could see the water level, which was great, except Wilma said after about two weeks, it filled up with algae and he couldn't see his water level anyway. But this one is connected right at the bottom. These two barrels are right at the bottom. There's one connecting point, And then there's only one hose bib. So the water comes out of that one. The second picture that popped up there is two of those red barrels with the curved sides. So the holes are drilled in the straight section of the barrel. And again, there's a stand pipe on the inside of the barrel and then the water runs out. Both of these barrels have hose bibs. That connection is two of these guys. The threaded connection, one into each barrel with a short piece of pipe between them. So that's how you make the connection between barrels. The one on the top right is my friend Linda down in Venice. Um, she and I set these up. I, used, I like to use that little rubber coupling between those pieces in the connection so that if your barrels don't settle quite evenly, uh, you, you have a little give there. Notice that these are set on big 24 inch stepping stones. There are six concrete blocks under each barrel. Linda set them up the way with the fittings that the county gives you. So the barrels are actually turned upside down and the valve comes out the bottom. Her downspout is right up at the top here. And that black line you see is that basket like I showed you earlier. And because we had cut a hole in the top of the barrel big enough to get the basket in, because it's a seven inch or so, we were able to get our arm down in there and put a standpipe inside this right barrel. So there's the overflow with a standpipe on the inside. And then when it, it fills up, it runs down to a splash block. So the water would come in the downspout on the right barrel It'll fill till it gets to that connecting point, and then the other will fill till it gets to that point, and then they'll both fill till they get to the top of the standpipe, and then it overflows. People often ask me, why did we put the overflow so low? Linda had plans for more connections. 
So I got Linda her first barrel. And then, like I said, I think she ended up with 17 around her house in clusters of three or four. So there's lots of ways to do this. Uh, here's the setup. Obviously the water comes in the downspout here. This barrel will fill. Notice those are decorative concrete blocks. They have texture to them, so they look better than just the plain old gray ones. But this one will fill till it gets to the top of this elbow. And then it'll overflow to this one. And it'll fill till it gets to this elbow. And then it overflows. And then here's the overflow pipe on the end. And then you see this little green thing down here at the bottom? It's like the horn you blow at New Year's that uncurls and makes a noise. Well, this is made for downspouts, but you can certainly hook it up to your rain barrel. It's spring loaded. When it rains, it uncurls and it's full of little holes. So it's perforated. So the water sprinkles out in your yard. And then when it quits raining, it curls back up. Same principle, you just, unlike the guy with the black hose that he has to move every week, you don't have to do that with something like that. And all this stuff is in the big box stores back where the downspouts are. If you go online, you will find an amazing amount of stuff if you just Google rain barrels or rain barrel parts. Uh, I said earlier, you don't get a lot of pressure. You only got gravity and you've got a couple of PSI. So you want to get your barrel as high as you can, but there's a trade-off with height and stability. You don't want to get a pile of blocks so high that it's not stable. You just have to kind of play with that for a while. And as I said, there's a million ways to do this. This is a guy in Chicago. He's the son-in-law of one of my friends. I call him Bob the Builder. He's actually a postal carrier. But this is quite a setup he built with pressure treated four by fours and two by six lumber and connected it to his downspout and connected the ends of the barrels. I think his pipe is pretty small. Maybe Chicago doesn't get the frog strangler rains like we do in Florida, but his vertical pipe down the side of the barrels to me is a little small. Um, if some people wonder how he connected those. All of the barrels have bungs. The piece that screws into the end of the barrel. And they actually in the center have a little knockout hole and it's threaded. So he actually threaded pipe fittings into the center of the bungs, left the bungs in the barrel and then connected up his pipe. I thought it was pretty ingenious. I just think it's a really strange look. <laughs> it works. If it works for him, that's good. All right, so how many barrels do you need? An inch of rain on a thousand square feet of roof is 625 gallons of water. This classroom I'm in is bigger than, is about 1,100 square feet. Most of us have a house bigger than that. Usually in Florida, whatever's normal anymore, we get about 50 inches of rain. So that's like 31,000 gallons of water that you could harvest just off a thousand square feet of roof. Uh, so you can collect, connect as many barrels as you want. Like I said, I think Linda ended up with 17 around her house. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what we're paying now when we still had a house in Sarasota County, we paid about $10 per thousand gallons for drinking water. $7 out of that $10 is the sewer fee and they don't meter the sewer. So they figure if it comes into your house, it's going down their sewer, even if you're putting it on the yard. So you're paying for the sewer fee, even if you're not using the rain or using the water, the potable water in the house, it goes on the yard. Okay, if you can't get enough barrels, there are cisterns. This building that I'm standing in is a green, LEED certified green building out under the patio behind the building. There's a 20 
3,000 gallon cistern. All the water off the roof comes into the, goes into the cistern, and then it's used to flush the toilets in the building and to water. Uh, you have to have special permission to pipe the water into the toilets, and the health department made them put a sign over all the toilets that said don't drink the water, but it works. So on this, the water would come in the top, here fills up, here's a little stand pipe that actually gives you some area for any debris and stuff to settle out and then it overflows the standpipe, and then it goes through the fitting and out to water your yard. Uh, this is some barrel, Wilma took these pictures. They're out on Siesta Key and it's a big house that's built code now. So all the living quarters are upstairs and this the ground floor is storage. But these tanks don't look that bad. Here's the property line. So there's enough shrubbery and stuff that the neighbors don't see them and complain. Um, and I don't know, but I would guess they may have a thousand gallons there. And that would be a good place to collect your air conditioner condensate because I'm sure there are air conditioners upstairs. Okay, Kevin, do we have a question? So the question is from Sarah. She wants to know, is there any way to hook your barrels up in the garden without gutters uh, and still get enough water? And what do you do if your garden is much further away than the gutters? You don't have to have a gutter to hook up your rain barrel. And what, was, and what do you do if you're... And will you still collect enough water, it looks like. And what do you do if your garden is much farther away than your gutters? I, I guess you get the water to your garden. Garden hose. Um, I have a picture here later. So um, I have a 30, I had a 30 gallon barrel that I just set, we cut the top out of it and just set it on the pad next to our air conditioner unit outside. And just the water that came off the roof with no gutters would fill that barrel. When we get a heavy rain in Florida, you be amazed. And then I'll show you my little barrel that I cut the top out of. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But I thought these green cisterns didn't look too bad. Okay. Ah, oh, very next slide. Uh, usually not a problem with mosquitoes if your barrel's closed. If you've got an open top, you probably need a screen. And this is my little barrel I was talking about. It sits on the, the air conditioner, it's right next to it. This barrel just happened to be formed so that the ring on the inside was tight enough. We just used spline, like you put window screen in and put the screen over it and tucked it in. If most, every barrel is made differently. If you didn't have that little skinny thing, you could stretch the screen over the top and tie it or wire it in. This barrel is one of the red ones, and that's the one we took the ring off, and instead of putting the plate back in, we stretched a piece of screen over the top, and then the ring holds the screen tight. Uh, you can do a lot of things to keep the mosquitoes down. BT, you can buy little jars of pellets that are Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a bacteria that is, e that is specific to mosquito larvae. It won't hurt your plants or your pets. I know it will keep the mosquitoes down. The thing I see more often than the pellets like this in the jar are the little mosquito dunks or donuts, they, oops, they call them. Um, you find those in most of the big box stores there. Um, if you get the donuts, crumble them up because one donut is rated for 100 square feet of water surface. So if you're putting it in a rain barrel, you don't need the whole donut and they get to be pretty expensive. So break them up and just put a few crumbs in. And if you don't want to do that, you can just put a tablespoon of vegetable oil on the top of the water 
and it'll form a film and a mosquito lays eggs in there and the larvae hatch. The oil gets in their breathing gills and then they can't develop, so they won't ever fly. So they won't ever get out of that larval stage. Did you, how long would that oil last? Uh, how long would it be replaced? Um, I don't know. I mean, in Florida's heat, probably every couple of weeks. I don't know. You, uh, you just have, I've never done that because my barrels were all screened, but you just have to look, kind of feel the top of the barrel. If you're going to cut the top out of your barrel like this, leave this outer ring intact because that's what gives the barrel its stability. If you cut below the ring and cut the ring off, your barrel is going to flop around and be weird and you, it'll break down eventually. So leave the ring on if you cut the top out. If you have a valley where a lot of water comes shooting down the valley and there's no gutter, you kind of have to do a trial and error. Watch when it when it's only trickling, the water is going to drop straight down. If it's a heavy rain, it's going to shoot way out. But you can kind of find the midpoint or where you think you're going to the sweet spot, if you will, where you can collect the most water. Is that and and then just run a garden hose. You're not going to run a sprinkler because you don't have enough pressure, but you can run a garden hose, or you can get. You know, you can fill your watering can and carry water if it's that. But garden hoses work. Uh, sprinkler hoses depends on the hose. We had an old one that we'd actually brought from St. Louis years ago, but it was one of those spongy ones. And we'd hook it up to our rain barrel and it just sat there because there's not enough pressure. But now you can buy sprinkler hoses that are actually made for lower pressure. So those will work. You can run them out to your garden and then let the hose sprinkle. Like I said, there's a lot of things you can do. People do different things. All right. So if you're going to run your overflow somewhere out in the yard, one thing you can do with it is a rain garden. It's just a low spot. Florida is so flat that just three or four diff inches difference in elevation will change the water flow. So if the water's, this, this is some park, some apartment building because of a lot, but if the water is coming down this hill, it collects in this little shallow spot and the plants will soak up the water and <laughs> what was that? And they're plants that are drought tolerant. So in the winter, when we don't get any rain, they're okay. But they can also take wet feet for a few days. Um, there, I've seen some really nice looking rain gardens, but they're easy to do. Takes a while to get them established, but they work really well. And that keeps all that water from running off the yard and into the parking lot and then down the street. If you go to our website, which is there at the bottom left, sarasota.ifas.edu, and search for rain gardens, there's a couple of really helpful publications that show you where to locate them. Just real quick, that website was incorrect there. Oh. It's sarasota.ifas.ufl.edu. I'll type that in the chat room. Okay, Kevin's gonna put the right the email address has changed. It's sarasota.ifas.ufl.edu, but he's going to put it in the chat window. Thank you, Kevin. So this is, you would want your rain garden. You don't want it right up against the house, but you want it somewhere between the house and the street or the house and the creek behind you or whatever to collect all that water. Most of us in Florida don't have this much slope in our yards, but you will get a few inches and you can put your rain barrel out there, but you can find those publications on the website. Okay. All right. Everything we do these days has fine print. Here's the fine print for rain barrels. You can't hook your rain barrel up 
to your potable water system. The county may require you to put in a backflow preventer because if they ever lost pressure and sucked water back in, you've contaminated their potable water system. You can't connect it to your irrigation system. Can't be connected to anything that has to do with the county. And there's no reason you would want to do that. I don't know why, but some people have strange ideas and do a lot of strange things. And then the very best, last little paragraph there says, rain barrels may not be used to introduce any type of chemical, pesticide, or fertilizer into a garden hose connection or hose bib valve. So there's the legal reason, besides the Florida friendly reason, not to put any chemicals in your rain barrel. And I don't know for sure, but I suspect somewhere along the line, some kid drank something and got sick, and now we have a law that says you can't do that. But that's the fine print. Okay, we've been through a lot of technical stuff. We're gonna get to painting and creative. If you've got any questions now, is a good time. But we will move on. So there's, again, there's so many different things people do with their rain barrels, it's amazing. The one on the left, I think we had at Florida House with the picket fence and the barrel. The wooden one in the corner is really nice. The most important thing is you need to get spray paint that's meant for plastic. When my husband and I set up our first two rain barrels, we used Zinsser, which is a good primer, but it's not made for plastic. And it was okay for a while, but after four or five years in the Florida sun, our neat picket fences and butterflies and vines had all peeled and cracked and looked pretty bad. And we got a nasty letter from the homeowners association that we had to get rid of them. So we took them down and that's when we found out we had to cut all the pipe that we had glued together. And we pressure washed them and scraped them down. And by then we knew about these paints for plastic. I'm not sure they were even on the market or we didn't know about them the first time we did these but you can get them with just the primer and then paint anything you want, or you can get it uh, with the color already in it. You just need to make sure your barrel's clean. Anything you're painting anything, that's common sense. Uh, especially if you get a soap or a wax barrel, because they can be pretty slimy. And it helps to take a little sandpaper and scuff up the surface and then the paint will stick better. But once you get it primed, uh, this one is just primer. It accepts about any kind of paint you want to put on it. Uh, these are acrylics like you get in the hobby store. This one on the right, somebody actually used gesso, the art material to make the little flowers three dimensional. Uh, people do some really amazing things with them. Something for the grandkids to do or the family. There's all kinds of things. There's dragonflies and sunflowers. There's another one of geckos and butterflies. Wilma has these stencils. Somebody up in Pinellas County did these and her Email address will be at the end, or Kevin can put it up for you. And if you email Wilma, she can send you the stencils for all these things if you want them. Another one. Notice the concrete blocks at the bottom here with a stone on top. Flexible downspout. You can't see the overflow. It's the other side, but here's your hose bib and a bucket underneath. Same thing. Hose bib, bucket, there's your downspout. This one flows into that one, and then the, the overflow is on the far side. And then if you get really fancy and you want to protect your artwork, you can spray it with acrylic.
Or as my friend Linda did, here's a cluster of her barrels. You can paint it to match your house and then the neighbors may not think it's so bad. Again, here's her downspout. There's that basket. They're connected across here and there's a stand pipe inside this barrel and then it goes to splash block. And then she has hose bibs and hoses connected up to almost all her barrels. I created a monster when I gave her a rain barrel. Um, if you have our house, we had a shingle roof, I mean a tile roof and we didn't have a lot of trees so we didn't get a lot of debris. Uh, Linda has a shingle roof and a lot of trees. So she got lots of leaves and grit off the shingles. So this basket really worked out for her. There's enough of a gap here under the downspout that when the basket filled up with debris, she could just take it out and dump it and put it back in. I just miss questions. <laughs> I miss my live audience. You have a question after a time. Okay, question? How do you deal with algae building up in the barrels? First of all, the barrels are usually dark blue or black, so you don't get much light. And if you're only watering your plants, so what? The algae soft, it'll go through the valve. But in a dark barrel, you're not gonna get enough light to get algae. My little barrel that was an open top would fill up with algae, but the algae just ran right through the valve and out and it didn't hurt anything. That little barrel also got frogs in it, tadpoles. Our big tank in the back, the frogs got in it once and it sat right outside our guest bedroom window. And if somebody was sleeping back there and it rained in the middle of the night, the frogs croaking in that 200 gallon tank would bring them up out of bed really fast because they made a racket. We finally figured out how to put one of these screens baskets on it and kept the frogs out and that made it a lot quieter back there. So algae is not a problem. I mean, you're not drinking it. You're not, it just, it's there. But if the barrels are dark and there's no light, you're not gonna get much algae. All right, so if you get a barrel from the county, and I know some of you are signed up to pick them up next Saturday, uh, you will get these fittings. It's uh, one of those screwed to glued fittings, a, a reducer that's glued in to a three quarter inch. You get the elbow, you get the little nipple, you get a ball valve, which is probably better than a gate valve because when it's open, you get the full diameter of pipe rather than the gate valve is smaller. So it's less likely to clog up and then a nipple on, or an elbow on the end. Put Teflon tape on the threaded joints where you put it into the barrel and where you put the pipe together, but you don't need glue. Uh, you can, so you'll get this assembly. If you want to hook a garden hose up to this, you have to have a conversion from, this is all national pipe thread in PT. In this country, we have two different pipe threads. There's NPT and there's hose thread. Garden hose has a different thread. This is a female fitting. You can buy one of these little guys. Like I said, I think I paid 88 cents for it years ago. At one of the big box stores. It's NPT, National Pipe Thread on one side and hose bib on the other. And you just have to screw it into the end of this elbow. Teflon tape again. And then once you got it in there, then you can hook a garden hose up to it. Uh, there are two bungs in the top of all the barrels. I think I showed you before, the bungs have really weird, there are four prongs in here, and there's a hole in the middle that's actually a knockout that's threaded. That's how Bob, the builder, put his barrels together. He knocked out this hole, this piece in the middle. One of those two bungs is a really big coarse thread that you won't find anything that fits, and the other one is NPT, National Pipe Thread. If you get the barrel from the county, they will have the NPT loose so you can get it out. 
And then you can put all this together and screw it into the top of the barrel and then turn it over. If you decide you want to do something else with your barrel different from that and you want to put in or take out the bungs, they're really hard. Uh, if you're trying to loosen that, <laughs> where am I? All right, if you're trying to loosen that, there's the, mo the crudest way is two screwdrivers, which is awkward at best. I one day took a bung to our local hardware store and the guy was great. He walked around with me for half an hour to find something. So we found a U-bolt. It's just a standard U-bolt, but it fits right in there in the grooves. So you can put that in the grooves and then put a screwdriver through it if you need leverage to open it. And if you really get into this and you wanna do it, a lot of it, you can buy a bung wrench. Uh, I got this one off, it's made, fits right in there. It's really nice. I borrowed this back from Linda the other day to get this out of my little barrel at home to show you because I don't have a barrel here to show you. I got this one off Amazon for less than 10 bucks. It's cast aluminum. Uh, we did a big brain barrel workshop one day and did a lot of barrels and I borrowed one from Sarasota County Utilities that's bronze and probably cost them 200 bucks. But if, you, if you're not doing a lot, these work well. All right, once you got it all screwed together, thread it in, the NPT bung, turn your barrel over, this Arrangement of concrete blocks is, is, I'm sure, more stable than what Linda has with them all parallel. With them interlocked like that, they'll be more stable. <clears throat> Turn it over. And then in the top, uh, this little guy, I asked Dave, where'd you get that? He used to do the barrels for the county. He said, I don't know, I got this picture off the internet. But if you go online, this is actually a fitting that's made to go from your rectangular downspout to a round hole, because it's easier to, with a hole saw to drill a round hole than it is to use a saber saw and cut a rectangular hole to fit your downspout. And then this one has a four inch which I wish I'd had on my big tank, but as OCD as I am, I would put a fitting in an elbow and made it look different. But uh, I think this stuff is spiral wound and I think they just drilled a hole and threaded that in and let it run out there. But that's your overflow to get the water away from the barrel. Okay. Rain barrels. I think they've set up dates here to, to pick them up if you bought them online. I think online it ends up with the tax and the event bribe fee, they end up be $41. Just under 41. Yeah, 40, $40.99 or something. Uh, they'll take a cat. Well, I guess if you're buying them online, you're paying for them online. Right, correct. We normally have them at the workshops here live, but. Uh, they're, they're not heavy, they're awkward. I had an old, I had a uh, Ford Escape, I could get 355 gallon drums in the back end of my Escape with the seats down, close it up. We had a guy one day who bought two rain barrels and he pulled up to pick them up and he had a Miata. And he had them, he got them sitting in the back behind the seats and none of us could get to a camera fast enough to get his picture. But people, <laughs> a pickup truck would be really nice, but you can get them in the trunk of your car. They'll slide in the back seat of a four-door car. They're just bulky and awkward to deal with. And Chris Murray is the guy at Sarasota County Planning. They're the ones that actually sell the barrels. And that's his contact information. Uh, now there's the right 
sarasota.ipas.ufl.edu. That's it. Correct. There's the right email address. Uh, we have plant clinics. You can, if you have a problem, you can email them, send them a picture, say, what is this? They have both an email address and a phone number. There's Wilma's email and phone number if you want the stencils for the barrels. And that's it. Thank you.